Welcome to the block party. My name is Seth Kushner, and Gabby is staring at me intently because she wanted to know ready to go. Yeah, she wanted to know where was she going to look during the interview, and now she's locked in on me, locked and in. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Gabby Shirley, new reporter for the Lightning. That's your official title, right? Yes. So we're going to get into all that, and we did have Gabby on post to post just like five days ago, I think, mm -hmm. and it went through a bunch of stuff. Now I want to hit you with this first. I found your Instagram yesterday. Thank you for the follow back. Um, I saw that there was a death in your family. Is there? Did do you want to talk about that? And, and are you still affected by it? Yes. A death in the family, the 2005 white Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Been with me since college. Very emotional. Everyone keeps telling me I got to let it go. This car was destined to die. They thought years ago, but I held on to her for this long. And because you had no car payment, right? No car payment. I also had no AC. Mm. Um, but she also died on Thanksgiving morning. So, uh, and what were you ready? Were you looking at cars? I mean, because that's a big deal. No. I, you weren't. I I had my car paid off a while ago, and that was the greatest feeling in the world to not have a car payment. And I just, how many miles did you end up having? I don't. I feel like people said she didn't last that long. I think she was only at like one twenty six. Okay, all right. Maybe it was a hundred. It was a hard hundred and twenty six miles. Maybe. I you, mean, right. I'm from PA, so. Uh, I came back from college break. I remember I was with my boyfriend who I dated in high school and into college, and she was waiting in the driveway. My mom and dad surprised me. It was amazing. I probably cried. Yes. Um, That's a sweet ride. I mean, especially back then. Yeah, I love sunroof. Like, love it. Leather seats. And then um, first job in Indiana, then Fort Myers, Florida, then Tampa, Florida. And she finally just... Had to go to the salvage yard. <laughs> it's okay. Did you feel like you wanted to hold on to it? Hold on to her? It's, that's what I want to mm -hmm. do with my car. Yeah, can I just keep this in the driveway? And mm -hmm. they're like, no, what am I going to do with it? It was at my auto shop. And I feel like those guys are like my buddies because I was there so frequently. But I did get like the text. I don't think they called me. I got a text like, hey, your car's still here. I'm like, I know. I'm sorry. I'll be there in a second. All to, right. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that you were recovering from that. And it sounds like you got your new car. You're good to go now. You know, I... Yeah, that we're in the process. I've okay. been Ubering a lot, but um, <laughs> taking the city bus. If you see her around town, it's Gabby. I'm on the up and up. Everyone's sick of me uh, talking about it. So thank you though for asking. Uh, absolutely. All right. So uh, I want to find how long have you officially been with the Lightning? I feel like has it been a couple of months that the season already start when they hired you? Yeah, I started. I started really at the start of the season, but it took a while for the paperwork and the background check and the to go through, like the official, official things. Were you worried about the background check at all? Uh, I was, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. You never know who's trying to sabotage you if someone really wanted that job. So what was, <laughs> what was the process like trying to get that job? Were there tryouts? Did you have to, did they give you players to interview? Did you already have enough stuff on tape from your previous jobs? I mean, what did they put you through? Yeah, you know, Seth, I really feel fortunate and also looking back like, oh my gosh, all these things that I have heard throughout the years in this crazy business, this field, so true. It's all about who you know. And I've been here in the market for four years and always thought I had great relationships with Brian Breesman, Trevor, um, and I think that those really paid off. So they didn't make you go through too much when it was time to... Not really, because they knew, right, and... And I've never been, I've never hired anyone, but I imagine you look at stuff. We have a reel, a tape of all our video clips and, you know, you do the cover letter and, and it's, I feel like all of that, if you look at a slew of them, you think, oh, that person's good. Like, oh, I like this here, but do you really know the person? That's the catch that you can't, I always would imagine that that is super hard to figure out in an interview. And they knew me. And I think that that was a bigger part of it. But yeah, I mean, Breezeman, when he asked me to do the block party, he didn't really put me through anything either. I mean, you have a much more important job. So how did you find out that you got the job? Um, I was, it was definitely, and even so though, and I always felt, they're my bosses, but I also feel like we're, we're friends too. Um, but I felt like the process, they probably had to go through more things on there and that I was aware of, but. Were you checking in? I like, was, were you I checking was on in? the other side freaking out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to you. You're checking in. They're like, hey, what's going on? They go, hey, we're still waiting, you know, for the people above us. It's one of those things always, isn't it? I tried, though. As I say this, I'm giving away all my secrets, but uh, I'm kind of a paranoid individual. So I was really trying to rein it in and not let them know that I was freaking out. So the check-ins, I think I really kept them to a minimum. You'd have to ask them, but I, 
I hoped I did a good job with it. It worked. Look, it worked. So <laughs> did you feel any pressure coming in for Kaylee Chelios? I mean, she came in with a big name and she was a big presence, obviously, you know, with COVID and then having a family and then, you know, she's doing great things in Chicago. Did you feel, was there just pressure in general starting the job or, or did you feel anything more because of who you were kind of taking over for? You know, and I don't know why this seemingly helped me not feel so much pressure, but I always saw Kaylee and said hi, but I, which I'm kicking myself because she's amazing, but we were never really close. Um, just, I, I don't know. There was no reason for it, but you know, just, I would see her in passing. Yeah, but you were, you had another job. It wasn't like you guys were Correct. working together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Um, so I, A, didn't feel like I knew her that well. Um, and then B though, Coming in here, Seth, everyone made it very clear because, yes, Kaylee was loved in this organization and did a fantastic job, but everyone made it clear, you're not replacing Kaylee Chelios. You can make this job what you want to make it. Bring your best attributes. Bring that to this job. Don't try to because, I mean, she knows hockey backwards and forwards, and I think I'm getting there, but certainly I was. I am not at her level. You didn't have to be a hockey expert to get this. I wasn't a hockey expert when they hired me for the block party. I mean, that's what's great about this is that you can grow. There's so much stuff to learn. If you actually care about your job, mm -hmm. you can pick up all these things in a, in a short amount of time. For sure. But of course, right? You like working for the hockey team, you never, even if you don't worry about it, you always worry that you might say something ridiculous and silly and let people know that, oh, you didn't really understand that facet of the game. So that was what I really wanted to avoid. Hey, listen, I think if you know what an offsides is and an icing, man, I think, I think you're good to go. Check, check. There you go. Yeah, you don't have to fool anybody. So take me through like a normal work day. You're here right now, 930, doing this block party. Thank you so much for doing it in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved working in the morning. And normally the players are after practice and all that stuff. Uh, sometimes they shower, sometimes they don't. They're out of town right now. What's, it, what's the work day like for you? So I, I'm really getting used to it. Um, you have no, you have no routine, do you? Not really. <laughs> and I actually, I want to say I'm a routine oriented person, but I'm really just, I'm just kind of rolling with it. Um, but I was told initially that your schedule is the player schedule to which I was like, like, huh? like I'm not a, I'm not a hockey player, but it's actually very true. If they're practicing, I need to be there for practice. Um, obviously, media availability, I'm always there. Games, I'm always locked in. So, and and off days, player off days, unless there's something, you know, in the community or something else that we're working on, it's almost like, okay, like, you can have an off day as well. Um, so... Are you, are you getting those because they're kind of, they're out of town right now? So, they are out of town, and I'm hoping to be able to travel more. Um, I definitely feel disconnected when they're on the road, but... You had one, you traveled one game, right, with the team this year? Traveled one game All right, we'll get it. All right, so we'll just interrupt this story that you're telling right now, just to get into that, okay? Yeah. The team flight, you were there. How was that? Because you said you want to do more of that. Tell me about the experience. It was amazing. And Seth, you asked about the death in the family, the 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. You know that uh, I had to get her cleaned up, car wash and all, before I drove it to the plane. Because <laughs> when I asked Trevor, okay, I'm going on the team plane. Amazing. Where do I go? Where do I park? He told me, park next to the plane. Yeah. That's With all of these other fancy vehicles. Do you have to go through security or anything for that? Not really. Oh, my God. Get me on it. <laughs> not, not that I'm smuggling anything, but still the freedom. I mean, it's got to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I um, was there nice and early, had my car all washed up because, you know, she's a little vintage. And, uh, and you're parking next to a Bentley and you just go. I well got there early enough that, like, the players came after. So okay. I could avoid, like, doing just that. Um, but... The team plane was amazing, nice and spacious, lots of food, beverages. Are you close to the players or do they have it kind of roped off or the players in their own kind of world? Like there's first first class back there, but you're just a normal first class. I would say I think like coaching staff is up front, players in the middle, and I was like in the back with like the rest of the broadcast team. Um, but – I hope they know my face now and are getting comfortable, Seth. But of course, you never like. I just don't want to be too much. Is that is this something? So I just try to stay in my stay in my zone. But eventually, you'll establish a relationship with you know a good amount of these guys. I mean, I, that's what's just going to happen over time. And I'm sure you you are ready for that process to speed up. Who do you feel like sure. you have like a good relationship with so far? Oh, gosh, basically, if anyone calls me by my, by my name, I'm like. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is good. We are on the right track. Um, 
Gosh. You have, you have any follows from any of the guys on like Instagram or Twitter or anything like that? I know that's a big moment when you when you feel seen. It's <laughs> a big moment. I've, I've, I've had a few of those over the years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think so yet. And I've I follow a bunch of them, obviously, for the job. But I also did that like years ago. So I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to give myself more credit, but I don't know if I followed them today, if maybe they would see it and follow me back, but I've but, already followed them. So well, I think you should unfollow and do a refollow. Do a refollow? Yeah. Let's Is that just, allowed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's see what happens. <laughs> I mean, you do that. Uh, I mean, I've done a lot of weird things, but I would tell you right now in this stage of my life, I'm too busy for that, but I, <laughs> I have played social media. I know it does seem a little, you're right. Like yeah. I don't, I'm not really focused on it. I would say I have the uh, social media numbers going up from just fans in general. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's great when the lightning tweet out your, your handle. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it goes up. All right. So I, I interrupted that story. Now tell me just about when you're on this flight. I want to know about the snacks. You told me that they bring you a full fledged menu. What's on it. And what did you end up getting on this team? flight? Cause it was just what from here to Philly, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It wasn't far. Um, <laughs> and yes, they're, is actually a menu, like on a piece of paper that is at your seat waiting for you. Um, I sat next to Mikey O'Halloran, um, a close friend and coworker now, and uh, he insisted that I have to get food because I was like too nervous to like, do anything. Um, but there were lots of options, and I think I mentioned um, on the previous podcast, Post to Post, that I did chicken, asparagus, and wild rice. And did everybody feel like that was a solid option? I think so. Yeah, I think Mikey got the same thing, actually. What was the wildest thing you saw on the menu? Was it a pretty, like, normal run-of-the-mill menu, or was there anything wild on there, like the Stamkos burger? Uh, yeah, no. Pre- I think there were no, like, funny names. Okay. Definitely just standard, <laughs> but still, like, very fancy for a flight. Yeah. I might have blacked out, too, just because I was, like, so uh, overwhelmed by I'm, everything. I'm blacking out just hearing about <laughs> it. Yeah. that's the- On the way back, though, I do remember this. Um, Mikey's nickname is Chowda. I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, Players say it. Coaching staff says it. It's amazing. I love it. And on the flight back from Philadelphia after the game, it was late, but there was um, lobster bisque and also clam chowder on the menu. Okay. So, everybody. Wow. Soups on a plane? What? Everybody had a good time with that. Everyone had a good time with that. Okay. So, part of, and something I learned about you, which is phenomenal, just what drives home why you have the greatest job in the world. You don't have to interview the players after a loss, right? Nope. Okay. So tell me, <laughs> tell me how that, tell me how that all works. Um, and if you know that one night, hey, I'm not, I don't have anything to do after this game because they lost, or or they're going to lose. Yeah. So my responsibilities between Bally and Lightning Vision, which goes on the jumbotron in game, um, I do pregame usually two different things: one for Bally, one for the team. And then the intermission interviews, I get one player each intermission um, or coach, and that's shared. So just one interview. But yes, the I have two interviews after the third, only if they win. So honestly, guys, I can't remember the last time they lost. Um, Are you ever secretly rooting for a, a loss because so, you want to go home and you just had enough that day? Never because I want to go home, but definitely in the beginning, like, oh my God, if I don't have to like worry about these interviews, like that might be nice. But I think I've already overcome that and just like the winning interviews after a win are fantastic. Tell me about the in-game interviews, because I always feel like I I always feel bad for the players because they're like, (sighs) 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 and you're like, go ahead and take me through that power plan. What do you guys have to do in the next period? And they're like, "Uh, you know, play, play our game. So is that, is that you ever feel bad that those guys are are doing the interviews? Because I talked to Chris Dingman, former lightning legend, and he told me not to feel bad for those guys because they're getting interviewed if they did something good. So what, what, how are you feeling when you're interviewing them right off the ice? Correct. And that is, (laughs) how we choose the player based on who scored, who did what. We're never interviewing a player that either A, just got, you know, hit into the boards and is hurting (laughs) or did something bad. Um, So, yes, I would agree with that. I still, every single time I see these guys, especially if, you know, they're wiping their face off with a towel, Brian's giving them a water. Whether I say it audibly or, like, mouth it to them, like, I am so sorry. And I try to make it (laughs) quick and painless. That's what I say. <laughs> after the block, I do. Party. I yeah. for sure do. That's great. That's how they're going to get to know you. So, man, oh man, what's the what's the most nerve wracking in game interview you've had so far? Was it something early on, or was it a player that they yeah. got you? And you asked if I have a really good relationship with any of the players, and I would say it's pretty it's pretty much the same across the board. But my first um, 
either it might have been even pregame, and I don't know if it went on Bally Sports. It might have just been for the jumbotron. Was Matthew Joseph, and he made it easy on me, gave me nice, long, well thought out answers, and. It was great. Yeah, Matty Joe, he is a great guy. Yeah. So what happened? So talking about things that you don't really have a schedule and, you know, you just go wherever they need you. I think I saw, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, the, the Stanley Cup's back in town and there was an event or was it at a hospital or where did you guys take the cup? Because I know you were covering that. Yeah, yesterday, um, right? Team's on the road, so they are not here. I'm not obligated to be at the arena for practice or anything. Uh, the Stanley Cup was out and about. Um, we went to the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital in Tampa and then we took it to um, the American Cancer Society Hope Lodge. Wow. So it, it was awesome. I mean, there I, I was just about to say there wasn't much to it, but it's the Stanley Cup. Like, what else do you need? It just sat on a table, and there was a line of people just waiting to see it, touch it, take a photo with it. Is the, is the cup tour done? Because I thought the cup, like, was done after the season started, and then the cup was still around, and now the cup is back, and I just saw Philip Pritchard in the hall, and I don't know, when when is it going back? I know you know, you have this information as the reporter. Please tell me. Oh, my gosh. Now you're putting me on the yeah. spot. I don't, the, the gentleman, oh, my God, and his name is escaping me. It wasn't um, Pritchard, who was with the cup yesterday, is from Toronto, and said he was going back on Sunday. I think there was an event last night for maybe some season season ticket members. Okay. And the cup was featured there as well. But it's it seems to still be around. It doesn't want to leave Tampa. I did yeah, I just didn't know how long you get to celebrate. I thought <laughs> once the season starts, it's over. No, but I mean it's making its rounds. There was a holiday party, everything like that. So the players right would feel that way. Like I would assume that they want nothing to do with it right now. But fans, oh, bring it on. Have you had your moment with the cup? Um I've been seeing it at these events, but again, I'm trying to play it cool. No picture? Just be, no. What? I just got to play it cool and be <sighs> the reporter and talk to the other people that are excited. But I got to rein it in a little bit. I I, under, I understand. <laughs> I, tr I don't even like to ask for tickets, you know, to, for, to Breezer, but I cash in on the Stanley Cup, but, you know, and getting a picture with it, you know, and just getting that little time because <laughs> it was with my daughter. And I just want to, you never know when it's going to happen again. And I don't, I don't care if you want to think I'm a fanboy. No problem, but I I need a picture with that cup. Well, see, Seth, the key word here is that I'm trying to rein it in. Yeah. So really, I'm like, ah, but I'm just, you know. Listen, if it's leaving on Sunday, just just sneak it in. <laughs> well, like, Breeze will let you hug it. He'll do all kinds of stuff. What's been the coolest moment so far of your job? Was it was it the private plane? Was there something else? Did, you know, Phil Esposito come by and say, you're doing a hell of a job? Any Anything like that? Gosh, I... Or are you I still waiting? Getting, no, no. I have been getting a lot of compliments and kind words from different people throughout the organization, um, which is really, really nice. I don't do it for that, but it's nice to know that people notice and also think that you are doing a good job. And really, I've been using this term, Seth, and I really should get more creative, but like, I feel like I'm living, living in a dream. Like, it is just every single day, it's amazing. Yeah, and this is, I mean. I love you, every part of it. Even this part of it right here. Even this part of it right, like, uh, wh like why do you want me on your on your podcast? I'm not that cool. I, li listen, <laughs> I, I I don't even book the guests. They just tell me. They, <laughs> can I, and in fact, let me tell you the text I got from Breezeman. He goes, hey, um, can you, you want to do uh, Kobe and Gabby on Friday or Wednesday or Friday? And I go, together? Uh, <laughs> I go and and JP was on the text and I go I guess I could do them together I don't I don't know how that would work and like no separately so here's the thing I think the Lightning love you I think they want to get you out there they want to get you on our show post the post they want to get you on Block Party I think that you're great so they just they want to get that face out there especially because they haven't had what a home game in a couple of weeks yeah and yeah. so so what are you doing on the when they're on the road are you just watching the game at home yeah so when they're on the road I'm really trying to be productive as far as what I can do here. Um, yesterday, the cup was out and about. So that first event, I think, started at nine, give or take. The second one was at three. There was, like, time to kill in between. So I was preparing for the game. I'm big on the notes and the stats because I feel, right, Seth? I'm, I still get a little nervous. Yeah. But I think the secret to success to overcome that is to just be 
overly prepared. And you were, and when you were on our other podcast, you you had all sorts of notes and stats. And this is that this interview. Such a nerd. Yeah, this interview is not about that. But where do you get your notes and your stats from? Is there a department that sends you it? Do you have to go look it up on your own? Because sometimes I'm trying to look up stats for guys I'm interviewing. It's just flat out tedious. Yeah, I uh, definitely have kept like from game to game, so I build off of the previous game. Um, there are game notes that I have access to that Brian Burns. Um, the writer puts uh, together and puts them online, and they are phenomenal. I've heard people say best in the league, and I would totally agree with that. Um, so I go through those. They come out on the morning of the game. And then, of course, just the good old Googling of the opponent, certain players, what's going on, following people on Twitter. Um, so, yes, while they're on the road, I've been fortunate enough to contribute to the radio broadcast. Yeah. Just like in the intermissions and post game, but that's been really fun. How excited. Are you going to the outdoor game? I'm sure you are, right? I believe so. Oh, f- flying with the team or you don't know yet? I haven't been told, but. That's it. That's probably a yes. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, how excited are you thinking about? I mean, it's got to be on your mind. Uh, yeah, I was told I can confirm that I'm going on the next road trip, which is three games out west. Ooh, a little chicken and wild rice and asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So uh, that's really exciting. You, I'm pumped. Yeah, that's is that the when you were thinking about this job and you were freaking out about it. Other than working for the Lightning, which just having that that title, it just it means so much to other people. They're like people are like, oh my god, you work for the Lightning. I can't believe it. What what aspect of the job were you just clamoring for the most here? I think, and this might seem silly, but working in local news, local sports. Um, you are covering a bunch of different things, a bunch of different sports teams at every level. And personally, and this goes to my note taking and me being a little bit of a perfectionist, I always felt like I was missing something. No matter how much extra time I put in trying to go back and listen to interviews from four days ago that I was doing, like, so even like appearing on scene for just a press conference with said player and I wanted to ask this question, I would chicken out because I didn't know if someone asked it the day before that I missed. Oh, okay. So I really enjoy just, and this is kind of what I was aspiring to be. I'm still, I still have a long way to go, but I just wanted to be the expert, an expert on the Tampa Bay Lightning rather than, oh, that's cool. You cover all the teams. Like, do you remember so-and-so doing this in, you know, the second, like, wait, ah, shoot, I must have, I must have missed that. Um, so I think that's been really, really important to me um, and being with the Lightning and just being able to be present for all of it. No, that's that's a great answer. Gabby, is there anything people need to know about you before we end this and then we have you on another podcast that doesn't even exist yet, whether they give you one or, or we, whatever? Is there anything that we didn't cover here? Oh, one more thing I did want to talk about. You were at Yanni's little ring ceremony that the the players and they kind of had that for him and you kind of snuck that in there when we talked to you last time that that's incredible that was a very exclusive audience that was in there it's just take me through your perspective when yanni walked through the door to get his stanley cup ring i knew that everyone was very very excited i was there early um in a room down there uh, by the locker room and i was with a couple other people that worked for the team they were getting set up and then slowly but surely, and I knew his former teammates, some of them were going to come, but I didn't know how many. And I think every single teammate was there. Were you shocked? Every single Lightning player. Were you shocked seeing everybody kind of roll in? Because I'm sure you were there first. A little bit, especially because, right, it was a game day. It was before the Seattle game. And players, they have a routine. Um, and It's called getting the hell out of here after the morning skate, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But yes, yeah, slowly but surely, every single one of them trickled into that room and, you know, he opens the door, his wife and his daughter were there and, you know, a round of applause, like just the emotion just filled the room and he was smiling from ear to ear. Um, and I think I already mentioned this to you, but I really enjoyed um, his little girl, Emma, just like seeing all all the players that she used to see all the time. I mean, you could just tell she was really excited. Too. I would have paid. I think it would have paid 50 bucks to have a seat in that room. I think to see, watch Yanni get his ring. Really? I mean, it's just that uh, I'm very jealous that you've gotten to do that. So more so <laughs> than the team flight with the chicken and rice and not having to go through security. <laughs> Gabby, congrats on getting the job. Congrats on the flights that are going to be coming up and everything. Congrats on going to the, uh, the outdoor game, which I'm, I'm sure is going to happen. Team flight to be decided. Thank you very much. Can't wait to see you around here and have you on the show more often. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure, and I'm honored to be here. Great job. Do you want to look at the camera or anything? There we go. (laughs) 
Thank you.